It does not seem that long since we would head out for a snack or breakfast and if considering a coffee, the only option would really be whether we took milk or sugar. Goodness, how times have changed. Nowadays, a barrister will offer me a list as long as my arm of various options, some of which I have not heard of, as to whether I wanted coconut, pea, cashew, or various other milk options in my Americano. To coin a phrase, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the changes we have seen, all pointing in the direction of veganism and its spread across the world. Supermarkets worldwide now sometimes have whole aisles dedicated to the likes of meat and dairy-free foodstuffs. And this is no coincidence when you consider that one of the global food giants, namely Unilever, have openly forecasted the global plant-based meat market alone to be worth nearly 35 billion US dollars by the year 2027. Earth Day, which has been celebrated every April since the year 1970, has focused people's attention on becoming more environmentally friendly during their daily lives, with their eating a more sustainable diet being one way that they as individuals can do their bit to protect the planet. Even the higher echelons of society have seized the opportunity with both hands, with high-end London cheesemongers doing a roaring trade with their non-dairy cheese lines like Blafala and Fetamorphosis, which sell from seven US dollars per 100 grams. On the face of it, providing omnivores with the opportunity to seamlessly access a less animal-dependent diet seems excellent but is it more sustainable and healthier? Arguments that intensively farmed animals are bad for the planet and that we should all look elsewhere for protein and other food alternatives are compelling. Health arguments can be taken in different contexts, given that whilst meat and dairy products are undeniably good sources of protein and other nutrients, many health professionals recommend the reduction in the consumption of red meat and processed meat protein with links to bowel cancer, with some meat and cheeses containing an abundance of saturated fat, which can be responsible for cardiovascular disease. There are various meat alternative sausages and burgers available in the shops and the jury is always out on the verdict of taste and consistency, but sale indications do support an upward trend. But are these options really more environmentally friendly than we believe, especially when you consider that raw materials like say soy, coconut or jackfruit must be imported? Are, for example, soy-based protein alternatives really the healthy way to go in the long term? The best place to start this discussion is probably our bodies, with a look at how they process food and its ingredients. After all, as eloquently summed up by University College London's Dr Malgazata Desmond, just eating plant-based diets is no guarantee of health. We still need to select healthy foods. Andrea Reimer, a dietitian at the Vegan Society, agrees, stating, we already consume too much salt and saturated fat, and not enough fruit and vegetables. Some of this is coming through the vegan food industry, and a lot of ultra-processed foods are being produced. Gunter Kunnel, Professor of Food and Nutritional Sciences at the University of Reading, has looked more closely at the subject of trends in relation to nutritional balance. He states, the problem is that when something becomes popular, a uh, fashion, people don't think about it properly. A lot of people think that because you can buy something, it is safe. People eat replacement products without checking the differences. Milk is a very good example of this mindset. Drinking soy milk is not the same as drinking cow's milk if you are reliant on milk for most of your calcium or protein and switch to a plant-based drink, you could run into problems. 
The fatty acid content is different and it contains isoflavins that can interfere with your hormone system and can be an issue for people with thyroid problems. Few people would argue that animal farming has an environmental cost, as indeed does feeding the world's ever-expanding population. But not all animal farming is equal, as policy director of the Sustainable Food Trust points out. Animals with an exclusive diet of grass, which grows in abundance in the United Kingdom, for example, will require little or no imported soy or grain. He is also keen to clarify that whilst such animals are blamed as a contributor to global warming due to their methane emissions, statements are inflated because unlike carbon dioxide, which stays in the atmosphere permanently, methane breaks down over 10 years. Other people to study this subject have also said that whilst a steady increase in methane emissions is contributed to by certain animal farming, the more alarming and recent increase in methane emission levels is not believed to be similarly accountable, but because of unconventional gas extraction, namely fracking. University of Oxford professor Miles Allen puts it like this. There is a strong argument to redistribute meat and dairy consumption so that those in the developed world consume less, with more going to protein-deprived populations. If we were to eliminate the farming of ruminants altogether, namely methane-producing sheep, goats and cows, it is estimated that this would merely shave just 0.1% from the total global temperature inflation, estimated to hit 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2050. This places such food production low, on the list of causes, compared to the damage done by CO2 from burning fossil fuels. Wherever we feel placed in this debate, veganism is here to stay, so it is perhaps best we look at the ingredients in such products even closer to be sure that they too stand up to scrutiny. Seeming to have been around for an eternity in Asian cookery, tofu is made by grinding soybeans with water to make milk, after which it is coagulated with either calcium sulfate or magnesium chloride. It can be made in the home with little more equipment than a liquidizer. However, given that the increase in tofu production at scale has increased greatly over the past 70 years, intensive sci farming has been responsible for the loss of both rainforest and savanna in many parts of South America. But what does point towards meat eaters is that 80% of this soy production is used to feed animals. If we look specifically at the health benefits, firm tofu boasts 1.2 grams of saturated fat per 100 grams, compared to the 5 grams contained in a similar rump steak. However, a 100 gram skinless chicken breast would only have half a gram of saturated fat, whilst all the 9 amino acid levels in tofu are comparable except one. Effectively wheat gluten, sitan has been used as a meat substitute in Asia for centuries. A combination of flour, yeast and water, resulting in the resting of the final solution before washing out the starch until only a gluten mass remains, is what is then baked or steamed to solidify it into the consumed product. Wheat farming also gets bad press given that it is an intensive monoculture which does not allow for biodiversity. Heavy use of nitrogen-based fertilizers can result in the release of nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas 300 times more potent than CO2. Sitan offers about 20 grams of protein per 100 grams, compared to say 30 grams of protein in chicken. But unlike meat and dairy, it is not a complete protein, nor does it contain any fat or fibre. If we briefly think about the production of milk alternatives, the source of sweetness is another topic of discussion too. Lactose in milk provides a natural sweetness, but if we look at one alternative example, say rice milk, 
the rice will have had to have been fermented, effectively breaking down the carbohydrate into maltose to provide this sweetness. And as current legislation stands, this sugar source does not need to be listed. There are continued concerns regarding the farming process for raw materials in vegan protein alternatives too, balancing those alongside regular milk produced with its resulting carbon emissions. One such example is the vast amount of water required in the production of almond milk, where in California, the largest producing area, the water consumption is so high that it is stated to account for much of that state's regular water drought issues. Sure, not all almonds are grown in California. Some come from locations with lower water consumption footprints, like Sicily. But this just goes to show how everything is not quite so clean cut in this debate. Having far more protein than any of its alternatives, cow's milk wins that value hands down at roughly 4 grams per 100 milliliters. The only two that naturally come close without the production addition of protein are soy and pea milk at around 3.3 grams per 100 milliliters. Calcium levels will also be lower in alternatives unless the substitute is fortified, but then there is the subject of saturated fat with the alternative products all featuring lower levels than cow's milk. One side ingredient in soy milk is a high amount of plant oestrogen which can affect people's hormone levels. Remaining a mystery to most consumers, the production of so-called meat alternatives is often kept a top secret process by manufacturers. Most qualify as ultra processed food, although certain experts claim this to be somewhat of a misnomer, stating we should concentrate on nutrition levels instead, comparing the process used to that of animal slaughterhouses. If we look beyond alternative meat's main ingredients, we then see the remainder as water, pea protein, rapeseed oil and coconut oil, along with stabilizers. So where do you stand on this conversation? We have not touched on food labelling in terms of a vegan sausage or burger, all of which are now, it seems, generic terms for the presentation of a foodstuff. Whatever you think, please do let us know in the comments. Until next time, goodbye.